community of South Padre Island is a pretty cool place to, to be and to live. It's a very small community, just about everyone knows each other. We have many people who live here, work here, and want to know where we're going. Master planning for growth and development is critical because if you don't know where you're headed, it's very hard to make a systematic, well thought out plan. Our responsibility is to make sure that we maintain beach accesses so that the Open Beach Act in Texas, people have adequate egress and ingress in order to get down to the beach itself. Our beach accesses are something that we consistently go back and forth about. How do we provide access to the community in, in the best way? And there's always the debate over storm surge protection in the form of dunes and the other side of the seesaw where are you impacting the view. One example of that is cuts in the, in the dune system. You know, everybody wants a walkway from the water to their their place, their home, but also every one of those cuts can be a point of vulnerability for all the residents who live behind that. So how do you balance property owner rights and storm protection for the entire community? Communities across the Gulf of Mexico face similar problems to those on South Padre Island. For example, northwest Florida's natural coasts of dunes, barrier islands, salt marshes, and freshwater wetlands provide a wealth of benefits to neighboring communities. Just as the dunes protect South Padre Island, marshes and barrier islands protect northwest Florida. The increase in development along coastal counties multiplies the population at risk. In northwest Florida, development in coastal counties has increased by about 16% since the early 2000s. This makes it likely that more people are infringing into natural areas, oftentimes not realizing the effect their presence has on the area's vulnerability to increasing coastal hazards, like storm surge amplified by sea level rise. An effective way for communities to address their vulnerability to hazards is with master planning, as was done in South Padre Island. Master plans are routinely updated, which means that communities can regularly revise their plan to consider the latest information on how they will be affected by the hazards of sea level rise and worsened storm surge. Communities all along the Gulf can learn from this. Northwest Florida, for example, is facing a risk of up to 10 feet of sea level rise in the next 80 years. Reaching out and involving everyone in the community is a very important component of master planning. Community disinterest is often cited as a cause of low participation in the master planning process, but this perceived disinterest more likely results from a lack of awareness or a belief that their input would not make a difference. Both of these issues can be addressed through clear communication with your city, town, or county. By incorporating community input and the most up-to-date science, master planning can ensure a balance of community concerns and increased resilience. A master plan is like a map or your GPS. If you're gonna take a trip somewhere and you really have never been there before, you really need to have some guidance to say, okay, this is how I'm gonna go from point A to point B. The data and scientific inquiry is incredibly important to this process. A lot of times I'll hear things from constituents about, well, that beach is accreting or that beach is eroding. Without hard data and studies that show what's really occurring, we can't accurately plan for the future. So what we utilized our grant money for was bringing in a, a third-party consultant. They are a, a third set of eyes. It's not the community alone, it's not city staff alone, it is a scientific mind looking at our situation and saying how do we best proceed? The community and the city staff and and the visitors, we, we've all been feeding them our thoughts and our desires for the island. And they've been sorting through all that and crafting a cohesive plan that, that we can adopt and move forward with as a community. We've taken a lot of time to do this type of in-depth analysis and it's really helping us moving forward. The time to build resiliency into your community is yesterday. Resilience planning and all the data that goes into it has to be done. There's no question about it. It's an investment in the future. That type of data 
and analysis over time is going to help us make much better decisions. And that's really what's important to South Padre Island is we have a very delicate, beautiful, amazing community here and particularly the ecology. And we really want to make sure that we're taking that into account and having our growth complement that rather than harm it.